is Rich Marvin and Manny Greer. We're in Soho, New York. We're going to try to get uh, Manny's history. Manny and his brother ran the Greer Gallery, where Noel exhibited from 1961 to 67. And uh, we're just going to try to put together one uh, so we can get a feel of what it was like to be in a gallery back in that time and to uh, how Manny and his brother started the gallery. I was born here in 1924 and I remember my own, my growing up. I was very close to my brother David who was 13 years older than me. So you went from uh, Abraham Lincoln High School to City and, College, uh, to City uh, College, the Army. And how was that? Well, I was very lucky. Uh, I took the exam to become a cadet. I became a bombardier and on the first B-29 training mission, we crashed. Wow. Uh, the tail gunner and the radio operator were killed. I was in the hospital for maybe a month or so. It was down to New York. Went to the VA. He said, well, what would you like to do? I took merchandising. He says, well, how about designing? I said, if that'll get me to Paris, I'll Thank be a designer. Thank you very much. We'd like you to work for us. But before you do so, it's a very demanding job, merchandising. Do something you've always wanted to do. Take a trip, vacation, whatever. So I said, ah, I've always wanted to go to Paris. Some kind of fantasy. <laughs> so <laughs> on to Paris. He switched me to Paris. 1956. David had been the first mate on a ship that ran the blockade. He picked up ref refugees in uh, Bulgaria ran the blockade to Israel, was caught, put on Cyprus, transferred to the mainland, escaped. <laughs> and when he got back to London on his way home, bought some watercolors, which is very significant because in, in New York he went to frame the watercolors. And David was a very juicy guy. <laughs> uh, and the woman said, you seem to know a lot about art. How'd you like to open a gallery? He said, I don't know nothing about a gallery. She said, well, it's easy. I've got the space on 56th Street. The gallery, there was a gallery there, but they moved to uh, 53rd. I said, I'll set you up. And she explained how you make money. But I worked with David on weekends. And, uh, but I, was, I had a job, too. During the week, I was working for someone in Brooklyn. Doing what? Uh, designing. Designing hats? Women's coats, women's suits, women's clothing. And then one day, David, David said to me, you would prefer working with being in the gallery business, would you? He said, be my partner, $400. Ah, wow, you bought in. Did you think about it? Or <laughs> no, well, no, that's when I started with David. Nice. 1956, yeah. Ruth Kligman was our secretary. And Ruth Kligman was the girlfriend of Jackson Pollock. Wow. <laughs> and Jackson asked, invited David out for the weekend. And David said, oh, I'm, I'm busy, I can't go out. And that's the, that's the weekend he killed himself. Wow. If David was there, David would never have let him drive drunk. He was that kind of person. So, uh, luckily, Ruth is alive. Uh, and she continued working for us a little bit. When that's I left my job, David was still working. At uh, Iron. Then eventually, David, when we started to make some money, David left Iron Art. And how did you start the, making the money? I mean, was it, uh, did you represent uh, some a people? A friend of David's, Alan Adler, from the Adler family. I mean, it's a, it's a very famous Yiddish theater family. Right. Alan uh, uh, mentioned Joachim Probst. And it was with Probst. We'd put him in the window and somebody would come in. He was really magical. Then we started to make some money. So David was able to uh, spend full time at the gallery. And one day, and one I day think Noel think walked in. This would have been around 1961 because Noel had uh, been down in Louisiana. He had changed his name. And uh, when he got back to New York around 1960, 1961, and so I guess one day he walked into. He just walked in? I guess he may have been at the Museum, at the museum of Modern Art. He just walked in, and we just took to him right away. Well, he's a, he's a fascinating character. First of all, his, his look, he's very serious. <laughs> and there's something about him. I mean, his being gives off something. 
and it's very attractive. Uh, it's very compelling. <laughs> you did one of his first shows, he had just gotten back from New Orleans, and you had a lot of his New Orleans works yeah. were displayed. And I guess it went well. It did go well. And, and, and at, the, at the end, whatever was left over, uh, Noel said, I'll send you the whole show. And of course we bought the uh, show. Noel was studying guitar at the time. And he used to sit in the gallery, he was playing, practicing. No, his, but he'd be sitting here, he was sitting playing his guitar, he'd look out, and all of a sudden he would drop his guitar and he'd run out. And he'd come back with some, with a woman. <laughs> What's he doing? He would drop his guitar. And say, this is my work, this is... Yeah, yeah. It was a perfect you guys setup. managing him, because a lot, many of his dealers, uh, it was the worst nightmare they ever had. Mm, no, he wasn't. He was easy enough to work with. Uh, it, was not, it was not a nightmare. And how about his motivation uh, as far as, uh, or uh, for some, uh, it's obviously to make money. It seemed like in Noel's case, just from your description of him saying, keep the art, that... For him, he just wanted to keep painting. I'm sure he, was, he had to make money, but he, the painting was more important to him. And his relationship uh, with you guys, he would... Uh... No, it was very friendly. We never bought his We were pretty was friends fun. having him sit there. Yeah. And we had it was good music. In 63 and 64, he goes down to New Orleans again. And um, this time he's uh, with Larry Borenstein mm -hmm. painting the Preservation Hall portraits. Yeah. And then I guess around 64 he comes back up to you guys and you have another show, this time displaying with, the uh, jazz work. But you were yeah. there uh, at the time. It, yeah. So you, you really just gave him the space. And yeah. yeah. Then around uh, 67, your relationship ended. The relationship ended with the gallery, but we always still always remained friends. Somehow we'd speak together. We'd... And what was it that you liked about No? Look, some people have a capacity. And they have a spirit. Um, you know, it's an, an, an intangible thing. First of all, he, lo he just loved the paint, and he was very serious about his work. So he thought about that and the music, he played guitar. Again, it's an intangible about some people. I don't remember anybody else except someone by the name of Benno, who had the same attraction. He was just very... And it doesn't always, always have to be positive <laughs> that attracts one. But it was interesting to be around that. that he was interesting, yeah. Maybe it was his intensity. Because, well, David was intense, but I wasn't. That's not my character being, to be intense. Right. It, <laughs> and um, in, the, in the picture of the art world, where would you put Noel if you had to place him within different tiers or... The art world is a difficult world. Um, he is not recognized as much as he should be. Some artists go up and down. Noel has sort of remained on, on one level. He never really attained uh, the kind of respect from uh, museums that we, we feel he should have had. Right. right. And as Noel's career were to go on, he uh, I think he... Uh, he definitely felt he had the talent. Oh, and yeah, he felt he had the talent and was as good as anybody. Right, right but to not be recognized in his yeah. lifetime, that really yeah. seemed yeah. to eat away at him. Must have. What would you, would you say that you missed about No. Uh. <laughs> the intensity, and there wasn't any chit-chat about him. It was always about something real. This concludes our interview with Manny Greer here on this beautiful day, and, and I think we've learned a lot. Sometimes uh, you learn a lot more than you think you're going to learn <laughs> when you go through your life processes. So may, may we all uh, have a wonderful life as Manny has.